This hurts so much. For proof of Meghan Markle's ruthlessness, one needs only to consider the Duchess of Cambridge. The wild accusations made by Harry and Markle have cast a dark cloud over Kate Middleton's Christmas plans. Greetings and thank you for tuning in to our Kate Middleton and Queen News broadcast. St. Mary Magdalene Church is ignored for 364 out of 365 days. But every year, when the royal family arrives for Christmas, it gets its 15 minutes of fame. The Windsors would rather be curled up in front of a roaring fire in Sandringham Drawing Room, waiting for Princess Anne to finish her quality street. But they have to get up early on Christmas Day because they are the royal family. Mary Magdalene, which dates back to the 16th century, has been mostly devoid of royal bottoms on pews due to the Covid lockdowns for the past three years. In 2020, Princess Beatrice married the eligible Eduardo Mapelli Mozzi, a real estate developer and a hottie. And she's back this Christmas season. The royal family has returned to their Norfolk weekender, a hulking bruiser for the first time in 2019. The annual cheer gag gifts, Tyndall's aplenty, the York girls and the walking tatler cliches they married, and Fergie, I'm assuming, manning the eggnog, have all been brought back for the occasion. But the royals who leave St. Mary Magdalene this weekend will be a very different group from the one who was there for Christmas. The terrain of the monarchy has undergone a tectonic shift due to the two deaths. One dismissal, the convulsive exit of two star players, accusations of racism and an institution focused on self-preservation at any cost. It's Kate, the new Princess of Wales, who will bear the brunt of the consequences of the upheaval in the royal family. The pressure on her must be through the roof ever since those Chrissy 2019 photos surfaced even though I know she never leaves the house without a beaming smile and perfectly coiffed hair. She ought to be telling Fergie to pour a few shots of Cavossier into the eggnog about now, if she's any good. Taking a break is necessary for a woman. Keeping the royal show going after 2022 will largely fall on the shoulders of the newest blazer covert in the world. In the first place, this is the practical reality for Kate. There were significantly larger numbers of active members when the Windsors showed up for Christmas Mass in the year 2019. Harry and Meghan, Kate's younger brother and sister-in-law, joined the royal roster. Joining Kate and her husband, whose likeness will soon appear on the British pound coin. The Fab Four's reunion was about as feasible as the writing in one of Fergie Mills and Boone novels. She still writes them. But hey, things would work out themselves. Those Sussexes were enjoying a well-deserved vacation in Canada, but they'd soon be back to work waving the flag for the Queen and country. But by late 2019, Harry and Meghan had decided they had had enough of the royal indenture and wanted out, a fact that was unknown to anyone outside of Vancouver Island. The departure of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex dealt a devastating blow to the royal family standing in the public eye and served as a personal setback for the young couple. These patronages and military roles are in addition to the many that Prince Andrew had formally given up earlier this year, including his position as Colonel of the Grenadier Guards. Consider, too, the over 50 groups, such as the Royal Ballet and the London Symphony Orchestra, who called the late Queen their patron. It's not a matter of who will volunteer to take them on, but rather who has the time to do so. Edward and Sophie, Earl and Countess of Wessex, 58 and 57 respectively, and William and Kate, 40, are the only members of the royal family still actively employed today, with nearly two-thirds being over the age of 70. Despite the fact that they will be working fewer hours due to their advanced age, the royal family will be expected to continue their traditional duties, such as shaking hands and planting trees in honour of special occasions. After all, the British taxpayers, who fork over $157 million yearly via the sovereign grant, anticipate receiving some return on their investment. Ultimately, the remaining HRHs will be spread even thinner. If you extrapolate this scenario, things look even worse. There's only about a decade left for King Charles and Queen Camilla to make international tours, so it will be up to William and Kate to carry the can for the crown. Back in the UK, Princess Anne will be the last member of the royal family to remain on the official working roster, joining only the King and Queen, the Waleses and the Wessexes. These events will take place as the Waleses strive to prioritise their legacy and long-term endeavours like William's Earthshot Prize 
and Kate's Early Years Foundation. I don't see how they're going to manage to do everything and still get some sleep. The dilemma of the Wells' is three children, George, Charlotte and Louis, hasn't even been addressed yet. Their first child was born in 2013, and since then they have reportedly made normal their parenting mantra in an effort to provide their children with the most conventional upbringing possible. The routine consists of the prince and princess dropping off their children at school, attending their children's soccer games and schlepping their groceries from one aisle to another in Waitrose, using their trusty golf cart. To my knowledge, George will be the first British monarch to have spent his formative years in an era dominated by the self-checkout. However, the reality of the monarchy's dwindling pool of HRHs means the parents' ideals of shielding their children from the demands and scrutiny of having a royal surname will eventually crash and burn. It's possible that George, Charlotte and Louis won't have the same luxury that William and Harry did when they transitioned into full-time royal life. William didn't become a full-time royal until 2017, after having been allowed to work as a helicopter ambulance pilot for several years. Those three are pretty much it. There are no other working members of the royal family on the horizon who one day might learn the proper way to hold a spade at a tree planting. More importantly, the three will be essential in rebranding the royal family as modern and hip. As parents in conflict, William and Kate will be under constant scrutiny. Are you a mother of a princess first? The world would ask. Prince Louis has already made his public church debut this year. In addition, Kate will bear a disproportionate share of the burden of protecting the royal brand, which has taken several hits in recent years, the most serious and consequential of which was the charge of institutional racism levelled against the royal family. A hereditary monarch in Britain requires a popular approval, which can be difficult to sustain. People must have faith in and appreciate the royal family for what it represents to them. With the recent accusations made by Harry and Meghan, the Wales' disastrous Caribbean tour and the recent ousting of Lady Susan Hussey after the long-time lady-in-waiting made racist comments to charity boss Ngozi Fellaini at a royal palace function. The future of the monarchy has never seemed more precarious. Although they're making an effort, Lady Hussey personally apologised to Fellaini at Buckingham Palace in late December. This does not effectively counter the royal family's racist narrative that has gained traction in recent years. Surveys conducted after last year's Oprah show found that members of minority groups in Britain view the royal family with suspicion. So, will William finally apologise for the royal family's part in the slave trade? During the time of the transatlantic slave trade, the Royal African Company, emphasis on the second word, shipped more enslaved African men, women and children to the Americas than any other single institution, as stated by the Smithsonian Institution. It would be his eternal shame if, as king, he did not take on the moral responsibility of the position and formally apologise for these heinous crimes against humanity, no matter how long ago they were committed. And the ever-popular Kate is the royal family's best, and perhaps only, chance. The palace's best defence against an uncertain and perilous future is the halo effect of her presence within the monarchy. So, swig away, Kate. Use as much brandy butter as you want and act like a devil. If you're going to indulge, why not have a third mince tart? Meaning, savour the finer aspects of royalty while you can, because things are about to get much more challenging. You too. Can I count on your approval of the ideas presented in my video? If so, show your appreciation by liking and sharing it with those people who appreciate the most, as you do right now. Don't hesitate to let me know your thoughts in the comments section, if that isn't the case. Also, if you're interested in future updates from our staff, please subscribe to our UK Royal News Trend channel on YouTube. Now, I'd like to say thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again tomorrow.